This video is about eye strain and how to prevent it. So let's begin with a practical example. This green circle will show you retina burn. Simply stare at it for the next 15 seconds and try not to blink or turn away. In a couple of seconds, you're going to experience an example of retina burn. It's one of the many contributing factors towards eye strain from digital devices. Retina burn is particularly relevant to developers as well as designers who often stare at unchanging walls of text or designs for long periods of time. This issue is particularly hard to combat as many monitors on the market do not actively work to prevent digital eye strain. Until now. What is digital eye strain? On average, people spend about six hours a day staring into a digital screen. This causes immense strain on your eyes as you end up blinking a lot less and working your muscles in your eye a lot more than usual. Digital eye strain therefore results in feeling fatigued, experiencing much drier eyes and having headaches as well. Retina burn coincides with eye strain as it's the constant blue light and unchanging background that slowly degrades your visual cones and damages your vision over time. There are many studies that have been performed by places like Harvard as well as medical associations which go into more depth about this. But before we jump into that, let me tell you a little bit more about my own experiences in terms of eye strain. It is an important topic to me because throughout my life, I've been growing and learning to become a web developer. I've been forced to spend countless hours staring at unchanging, monotonous backgrounds of text as well as website designs. I would constantly be gluing my face closer and closer to the screen as I'm trying to read my code properly. My vision would worsen over days, weeks, months, and years. The lack of variety on the screen was slowly degrading my vision, and this was confirmed to me by my optometrist over many years of visitations. Nowadays, I try to make sure I take care of how I spend my time on the screen, especially when it comes to creating websites. It's a topic I've actually talked about on this channel before, which you can check out up here. I do this by controlling the lighting that I surround myself with in my environment by adding things that are vibrant and alive to focus in my creativity, things like plans and decorations, as well as pleasing lighting. But this isn't really enough, as retina burn and eye strain is still the cause by working more than eight hours a day. The 20-20-20 rule is the closest I've come to imposing rules on myself that help. It's basically that every 20 minutes, you should spend at least 20 seconds staring at something at least 20 feet away. However, there is still one device out there which is the largest source of this problem, which I have never really been able to change, the monitor itself. So I decided to do some research into what elements of monitors were most beneficial for my eyes. I was immediately bombarded with all of these questions, such as, what is the difference between RGB or sRGB colors? How about picking an IPS monitor over an LCD panel? What about resolution? Are figures like pixel per an inch important? Should it be bigger, smaller? How many inches is enough? No matter the size, it never felt like enough. Do all these things even matter? I did my research and I came up with three factors that were the most important to monitors and their impact on eye health. These consistently ended up being blue light, flickering and contrast. Let's start off with blue light. It's a term that gets thrown around a lot. What exactly is it and how does it contribute towards eye strain? I wanted to learn a little bit more, so I jumped on Google and found that a Harvard study found blue light from electronic devices such as smartphones, tablets, TVs, laptops, and screens is not actually harmful to the retina or any part of the eye. Blue light filters don't even reduce the symptoms of digital eye strain. This was a bit shocking because it mismatched information that I had read elsewhere on the internet. So what does a limiting blue light actually have then? Well, since natural light is from the sun, it's a balance of the full spectrum of light, which is all the colors plus UV and infrared. This actually helps us synthesize vitamin D, something I'm lacking. The real effect it has on our eyes is psychological, where the natural light entering our eyes helps us anchor our circadian rhythms, telling us what time of day it is. This is why sunlight stimulates the release of feel-good hormones and endorphins throughout the brain and body, 
helping produce dopamine as well as serotonin. So removing blue light from our screens is actually helping our eyes tell our brains what time of day it is when it's time to get tired as well as have some rest. This explains why I can easily lose track of what time it is when I'm programming late into the night and why I feel particularly drained. I don't feel sleepy until I take a look at the clock and then realize what time it is. I'm always chastising myself for not paying better attention, especially when I'm in that development zone. The second aspect towards eye strain is flickering. This is when a monitor refreshes the panel very fast. Backlights are turning on and off. This is imperceivable to the human eye. However, smartphones and digital cameras can actually pick this up if you select to record the screen. This flickering can cause your pupils to rapidly go from larger to smaller, which in turn causes a number of issues to the eye, such as eye fatigue as well as eye strain being among the few. Contrary to modern belief, LCD panels are not flicker free. As you lower the brightness in dark settings, the flickering actually becomes more noticeable, especially in periods when the backlight is active during the duty cycle, which is shorter when the brightness is reduced. As someone who often writes code in the dark, lowering the brightness has always unconsciously made me feel better, but also more drained at the same time. And now I understand why. This is one of the differences between an IPS panel, which can implement flicker-free technology, allowing you to have a better image. So what about size? Studies have shown that on average, people find that a 28 inch monitor is actually the best viewing experience. This is due to the fact that our visual field only amounts to 30 degrees on each side. Anything beyond 28 inch mark is basically forcing you to rotate your neck or eyes. So, while many people, myself included, have always been on a race to see if larger is better with dual screen setups and extra wide monitors and super massive wide screens dominating the media landscape, they aren't always the best option and they're often excessive as well as expensive. After all this research, I learned about a product specifically designed for eye care in mind. It was the BenQ eye care series of monitors. I reached out to them and they were kind enough to sponsor this video. They sent over their latest in the series, which tackles most of the main points that I've been talking about just now. So I've been using this monitor for about the last week or so, and here are my thoughts on it. In terms of coding, which is the most important thing to me, I found that this monitor surprised me. The iCare series is said to have good brightness and contrast and color, but it wasn't until I experienced it that I actually got to see. The color theme that I usually use on VS Code is the Atom Dark theme, and this looked amazing on the BenQ monitor. I've never seen it look so good. It made my coding experience so much more enjoyable. The dedicated coding mode also contributed to the brightness and contrast being pretty much perfect. And this is actually one of the very first time I've ever seen a display setting made just for coding. Hey, check this out. It also turns vertically, though I wonder if anyone would actually code like this. Brightness intelligence was a feature I initially glossed over, but I actually found this little eyeball staring at me and I was wondering what it was. It actually changes the brightness and contrast of the screen depending on the background that you're in. So for example, when it was more sunny, it was brighter, whereas when it was darker, it was less. The other aspect is the flickering itself. This is kind of hard to trace down because I don't know if it's happening, it's something imperceivable, but I definitely felt like I could code for longer periods of time. I was a little bit worried that the size being 28 inches might be a little bit small because I've been using ultra wides and mega ultra wides for a while, but I actually found a surprising thing, which was that when I limited myself to a smaller screen where I could only view one window, I actually was more focused and concentrated on my coding. And I think that definitely helped. So maybe smaller is better. Some of the other goodies that this monitor delivered was just an easier experience for use. I'm often jumping on my MacBook Pro as a laptop that I can take with me on the road. And this monitor's USB-C cable that I can simply plug into the monitor and it connects and charges at the same time just made it much more effective to use than sometimes trying to connect up the HDMI cable behind a monitor or using dongles as well, which is a difficulty I often have. Yes, the resolution is only 1080. ADP and this means that maybe I'm not getting that same clarity but honestly I never noticed the difference between a 4k and a 1080p resolution and I think 1080p might be just fine. 
I tried some gaming on this monitor. I opened up a first person shooter called Valorant and had a few sessions. It was fun, but the 75 Hertz is definitely a limiting factor. So I wouldn't really recommend this for fast paced shooters. I did play some Starcraft with it, which was perfectly fine. And I also watched a few movies and I honestly didn't notice any difference over using a traditional monitor. So if you're using it for day to day actions like that, I think it should be just fine. My final thoughts are that yes, I think BenQ have done a good job with this eye care series of monitors, they definitely deliver on that promise of reducing eye strain with identifying key factors such as contrast, brightness, flickering, and a lot more. And if this is what you're looking for, if you're looking for something to help you reduce eye strain, I definitely would recommend it. And it's something I can see myself using for coding as well.